Right, good day everyone. Today we're going to record a, a video and try out the uh, R22 that comes with the uh, X-Plane 12 beta, um, the default one. Um, as you'll see, it's um, I just quickly put a quick colour scheme on it to give it a bit of a New Zealand look. Um, this one's just very, very quickly put together. It's just based on one that was sort of uh, around when I was uh, growing up that we used to do the spraying on the farm I grew up on, so um, up in Northland. I'm not sure if it's still around now or not, but yeah, there was no default uh, New Zealand paint schemes, there's only like two or three, so it's a good model as you can see here. Um, the blades sort of swaying around here in the breeze. I've had to turn real wheel weather off and just uh, lift the cloud layers manually a little bit so we could actually see the fly. It was a pretty crappy day. Um, the reflections and the scratches on the first specs are really good. Um, don't look too close at the paint job. I mean, it kind of looks like it's just a well used and worn one with the scratches and bits of mist on it. Um, right, we'll jump in and we'll have a go at starting up and getting, getting going. Door open. Shut the door. Sit in my seat. Okay, I'll do the usual uh, go to configuration menu. Then resume flight so the um, tablet pops up. And we'll just pop that open. So, what we'll do for this little short flight is we'll just take off and we'll we'll look for some deer. We're at Mingamari Saddle, and we might land at the Kakapo Hut, and then we'll finish up at the Pikiwatia Hut. So we'll just do a little little short short trip trip round and see how this thing goes. So we'll get everything fired up, see how it actually works. Um, see if the throttle. Throttle's working, that's rolled off. Um, mixture in. We've got. Oh, yep, fuel's on. Turn the strobe on. Strobe's on. Left, right. Right, left, both, and then we'll go to start and clear. Get the old Lycoming start up. Let's give it a bit of car heat because it's a bit of icing around today. Turn the battery on now. Right, it's on, and then we'll throw the clutch in and see if we can get this thing going. I might actually turn the car beat off before this, just get sure it's got clear revs. Yeah, the blades are starting to turn now. Keep pointing on the revs a little bit because it's trying to drag it down as it's engaging. Now we're coming up. Let's see if we can find some deer. Oh, I'm just going to show this off. It must be quite bad icing today. Right. Hopefully I can fly this. It's going to be super sensitive compared to what I'm normally used to. Very messy. Neat machine though, like it's very good detail inside and graphical um, but the textures and that on the panel and that, perspex reflections. But yeah, 
this was this was absolutely unflyable before the um, between 12 beta 5 update. So we'll head up through this little valley and we'll see if we can start spotting some deer. Outside view as well. Pretty neat. Sounds good. We've got to avoid negative G. Mass bump. Let's see if we can find some seeker. There's some right there. These are models that I've actually just made myself in a virtual reality sculpting app called Shape Labs VR. My uh, virtual reality gear for sculpting most of the time, um, and also for flights and sometimes as well. So uh, the deer that are in the exponent, uh, there is animated ones, but they're very low, low graphics. So I decided to put my own custom ones in. They're not animated. Um, that's something I want to try and figure out how to do. Another one over here. Just underneath us. And we'll have a attempt at um, landing in the Kakapo, little carrying it down by the river bed there once we find some more up here. And you can see a few of them scatter around there. It'd actually be a lot harder to spot but in real life than this because um, the, the thicker tussock they blend into it. Let's have a, a close look at one of these models so you can just have a really good look. Uh, I'm come right in close to this one, this big stag here. If I can hold it still enough. We've got no horizon here because we're up against the hill. You get a bit of an idea what they look like. Right, we'll start climbing out. There's a couple more up here, two or three. quite a nimble machine and it's um with the frame rates being as good as they are it makes it quite nice and easy to fly but it can be also quite tricky I've had to just had to adjust my um the settings and my um the curve curves for the control on my stick because with the longer stick of extension on my joystick now it actually makes them a, it's a little bit too much movement for an R22 which you want the movement fairly close to the middle because they're so so sensitive I was actually overcorrecting or wasn't able to keep up with it. I had to move my stick so far to catch up to it. So once I adjusted the curves, it's definitely brought it back a little bit easier. With a bit of practice, I think I'll get the, the hang of it. There's the Kakapo down there. I'll go around and come in from the south, uh, from the, sorry, the north, the up downstream side of it. Downwind. Close to that tree, but we're um, through the gap. Yeah, this is where I struggle a little bit trying to get used to my joystick. It's just in the ground effect, I get a little bit uh, wobbly. Right, we 
it in. Stream of the river right there that's towering a Taupo, I think. Right, now we'll head to the pick of a tear and we'll park up. So we can get out of here nicely without hitting any trees. We're crashing. It's always nice if we don't crash. Turn around. Pick it up. And we'll head out through here. sort of straight ahead of us up on the top of the ridge up there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually a really nice little model. Everything um, looks pretty sharp in the, the, the texturing department and um, you can even see the little uh, the compass up there sort of uh, wobbling where it's uh, sitting against on the front of the perspex or on that middle centre cross section bar there. Gotta say, this is probably one of the best R22s I've actually seen in a sim so far. For like overall look, feel, and um, just yeah, the whole smoothness, the, uh, yeah, everything about it just definitely makes it probably the best I've seen. I didn't think so the first time I had a go when it was um, no frame rates were just so appalling. But that's obviously been sorted. As explained, well, I'm still a beta after all. Hut just out front. So a little bit of a look around the hut here. Just trying to make Maneuvers out before we will land. They can fly on a dime. Basically, it's so maneuverable. I'll try a bit of a turn to the left. Try and settle it down here. Well, not make too much of a fool of myself with how sensitive this thing is, and I'm not used to it yet. Okay, down. Just open the door up and just see what it's um, the shutdown sounds and that are like. First, we'll have a little look from the outside. Yeah, the tail boom shakes like they actually do. Fantastic looking model, really. Even the motor's got a bit of a shake there. The old light combing there. Oh. Are dying a little bit there. 
and I'll disengage the clutch. Good sounds. Paint job's a little bit of a mess. You can see, like, haven't lined up the textures fully there. Ah, I'm pretty impressed with how cool that flies now. Neat little machine. I'll probably do more flights than that, try and do some more uh, different sort of variety of stuff. Um, yeah, that's probably us, that's probably us for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the R22 and X-Plane 12. We'll catch you on the next one.